What's up, everybody? Welcome back to My Twisted Life TV. I am Poetry. You are here for another recap and review of The Handmaid's Tale, Season 3, Episode I Don't Remember. <laughs> and it's called Witness. Can I be a witness? Something I just did was called Witness. Oh, Real Housewives of Potomac. That episode was called Can I Get a Witness? And now this episode is called Witness. So let me start off first by saying... I want to thank you all for being here. I know we're about to wrap up this season. We only got a few more episodes left to go. Um, but if you are new to my channel, you may not know this. I am a writer. I have written and published a few poems. I dabbled a little bit in journalism. I used to write, run my own blog. I used to be a critic on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, what else have I done? I've co-authored a, a book. And now I'm about to put out a solo project. This is the manuscript of my book called Regrets. Let me see you read. That's one of the names that I write under. And within the next couple of weeks, the pre-sale link will be available on this channel for you to purchase my book. This is a psycho thriller um, about, what's a good word for me to say? It, it's, I don't want to give away too much of the story. But it's a struggle of um, um, a woman who was in an abusive situation and a, a cop who came from an abusive household and how their lives collide and work out together in that book. But yeah, that's what that's about. So if you have an interest in a person in my book, just keep a lookout on my channel. There will be a pre-sale link coming up within the next couple of weeks. Um, I won't have signed copies available until after it actually goes on sale, which I am anticipating September 1st is the official sale date. All right, so, yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I get some of my rights on. Luckily, I don't write like I talk on this channel. I be just loose and like at home and feeling relatable when I talk on the channel. So, we're going to get right into this episode. We open up with June marching, marching her way back home. And she walking just like this. She walking just like this. Aunt Lydia is two steps behind her, unable to keep up with this limping handmaid. Now, her theme music on the entry, on this journey home, is Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. I call it a sympathy. Symphony. Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, which I love Beethoven music. I love classical music. I love opera, stuff like that. So, um, I do know that Beethoven's Ninth Symphony was his last completed project that Beethoven did. Um, it was the, one of the first symphonies that ever had vo vocals put to it, so they call it a vocal symphony. And usually throughout history, when empires, um, I think China used it before, uh, during the middle of the, the Cold War, the Germany, the Nazis, they all use it. This normally, when they play this symphony, is normally a symbol of the end of an era. So, what that's saying to me, two different things. One, that we about to see June finally give up her selfish ass in tidal ways and help somebody other than herself. Okay, and two, that this is about to be an end of an era for Gilead. Now, that could play two different ways as well. It's either the end of an era as the way we know it, because Commander Stapler is coming on in. Yes, I know Commander Stabler's name is Winslow, George Winslow, but he going to be Commander Stabler. As y'all told me many times in the comment section, he going to always be Detective Stabler, y'all. So he going to be Commander Stabler on this doggone recap. So since he's coming on in and being introduced into Boston, this may be a change of era for the way Gilead is as we know it. Or it could very well be the downfall, the separation, you know, like like in the Cold War, the separation of Gilead, the you know, the Jericho, the walls are coming tumbling down. So we got Beethoven opening up in June, like I said, limping on in. Now, I've said this, let me let me let me state this right here. Two things I'm noticing from a lot of my commenters. Um I watch other YouTubers after I do my recap and put my video up. A lot of you are taking lingo from the another reviewer and coming to this channel and putting it in the comment section as if that thought is your own. Um, I've watched a couple of Steve Worley's videos. I normally don't comment in his comment section, but I read the comments. And I noticed that some people 
have taken what Steve has said word for word and then coming here to my comment section, putting it as their own thoughts and views. Well, saying, hey, I got this from Steve. He the one that hooked me up to this or he the one, you know, I'm saying, I hope, I hope, I hope. That you guys are not taking the words that I'm saying and taking it over to other reviewers' channels and stating your opinion or your point of view or using what I'm saying as an argument for what they're saying. Please don't do that for me. And if you go to it, make sure you say the poetry said. Okay. Um, but two, the, the other thing that I, I, I picked up on last week, I said this time and time again, I cannot stand June. However, unlike many people I've seen in the comment session, many of you are pissed off that they are making June the white Harriet Tubman. The fact that over a hundred of you called her the white Harriet Tubman made me believe that you guys got that from somebody else's video and y'all brought it over here. Now, for me, for poetry, I am not mad that she is being considered the white Harriet Tubman. Let me tell y'all that. I'm going to tell y'all why. For a few reasons. For three seasons, I have screamed at the top of my lungs on this channel for June to do something than being a selfish ass, entitled ass woman. I have been screaming for three seasons for her to get a fucking backbone and to help somebody other than herself. To stop manipulating people for her own benefit, which ends up getting them killed. I have been bitching about that for three seasons. Two, I made a comparison early on in this season for June um, to do like Harriet Tubman. We were talking earlier on about the fact that she can't get back and forth to Canada. Or if she get up to Canada, it's going to be hard for her to come back. And, and I was like, Harriet Tubman did it. So it does not bother me, poetry, that she's being um, put into this savior-like role. Um, like I said, I've been telling her, do, so do something, John. That's John Q. Anyway, do something, June. Like, do something to help bring this place down. And now she's finally about to do it, or at least she's getting her mind ready to do it. At, at least that's the dream. Why would I be mad at that? That makes no sense. Freeing the children from Gilead will surely help tear down most of their structure because this is all about the children, as we stated before. Power, of course, is another thing, but this has been, the children has been the biggest concern for them to multiply. So no, no, you ain't going to get poetry on your side with that. I'm not mad at that at all. I want that motherfucker to do something. I want me to stop bitching at her inactivity. And being that she is the main character on this show, who the fuck else is supposed to do it? Who I know we would like another character to step up. We talked about that on many different occasions. It would have been great if, if another character could now be filling this role. If we could stop seeing June's old selfish, annoying face staring at the fucking camera. Every guy dog, I know I got cockeyed right there. Every dog on week. If we could stop that and get somebody else into the role, into the main role, that would be a beautiful, wonderful thing. But it ain't. June is our main character. And who else to be the savior other than the main fucking character? That just makes sense to me. So the fact that people are so god doggone mad that now she wants to save the children because she believes the children are the future, teach them well and help them lead the way because she wants to do that, that y'all mad about that. Which one y'all want to do? Do y'all want her to sit down you know, and not help anybody at all but still bitch about the fact that she ain't helping nobody? Make up your fucking minds. I'm happy she's doing it. I'm happy. I'm about doggone time. About time. Oh my goodness. I needed her to get off her selfish, entitled, high ass horse and do something other than be out there for herself. It just completely makes sense to me. Like I said, I told y'all before how much I dislike Serena Joy. But Serena Joy is one of my favorite characters. And the reason why she's one of my favorite characters is because of how layered her story was, how layered this character was. They fucking it up this season, but overall, Serena Joy was my favorite character. Aunt Liddy was my next. She was the next best character for me that had the most depth next to Serena Joy. I can't stand neither one of them. Yet, if either one of them got on board and decide to go against Gilead and turn this bitch apart, I will be cheering for them to do so.
Now, mind you, even though I will be cheering for them to do so, in the end, I still will want them bitches to get what's coming to them. Help me all you want. Help me set this place free. Cripple. Cripple Gilead the best that you can do so I can come in and turn it the fuck up. Let's do that. But in the end, bitch, believe it, I'm still coming for you too. That's how I feel about Serena Joy and our lady as well. So, even though I can't stand Joy, I mean, not, not Joy June, even though I can't stand June, the fact that she has now stepped up and wanted to do something. Praise be. Blessed be the motherfucking fruit. That's how I feel about that there. Okay, whatever. Let's move on. I was surprised to see that June's home was still Commander Lawrence's home. We went through that whole entire selection process to show that Commander Lawrence was a problem and that June should be removed only for her to go right back there. I was like, wait a minute, why? Make it make sense. Why is she going back there? Okay. It's been a month and a half that she's been gone. We talked about that last week. It has been a month and a half and the Commander Waterford ain't had a use for June yet. So, you know, they could have enacted some other type of punishment towards her. But it's been a month and a half. Um, and I literally like, go on, go up there and go to bed. Get your rest. You know, rest your weary head. Get ready for your monthly violation. We sorry we made you miss it last month. I'm sorry I'm taking my dog on camera. Okay, you know, and uh, all June could really say is praise be the fruit. You know, I hope that I'll be worthy or whatever, something like that. Well, upon entering the house, we notice all the paintings, all the books, all the sculptures, all the music gone. It's gone. Apparently, they did a little remodeling while June was gone away. And uh, Commander Waterford has put in new measures that every home in Boston must elevate their standards to be like the homes in D.C. Hmm. I found that very interesting. Like, yeah, I found it interesting in the sense that Commander Waterford was able to make Commander Lawrence confirm, conform to what he wanted to have done, considering their hierarchy. Commander Lawrence don't even come out his damn house. They all got to come to him. But you can tell me I got to fix my damn house? You low bottom feeder ass commander, you ain't even got no star on your shoulder, Fred. I noticed that today. Somebody last week, I don't remember who was in the comment section, was telling me about uh, the stars on the doctor. I didn't notice that he had a star. He had one star, so he got to be a high ranking commander. Commander Stabler got two stars. Fred didn't have none. There was none on his sleeves that I noticed. At least in this episode, I didn't notice it on his sleeves. Interesting. Okay, so but yeah, so I was really surprised that Commander Lawrence is being made to conform to the Gilead way of life now, according to DC standards. Okay, so June limps her way into the kitchen and runs in the bathroom. And Beth tells her that Eleanor will no longer be getting her medicines. Like nobody in the network can help any longer. And I'm like, I still want to know what her actual diagnosis is so we can stop guessing. Um, but the signs and the symptoms that they keep showing me keeps leading me back to schizophrenia. It keeps leading me back there. Or the intimate explosive disorder It is like schizophrenia, but not so much. Um, because when she's lucid, like the smallest thing can set her off. The smallest thing can trigger her. So, I'm, But I'm actually shocked that the network was the one that was supplying her, her medicine. Um, being the level that Commander Lawrence supposedly is, you would think that he would know how to get meds himself, you know, walk right into the doggone hospital and pick him up himself. I was surprised that they were getting it and not the commander. I mean, the commanders do a lot of things that's outside of the lines of Gilead. So surely someone his stature can discreetly pick up medicines right out of medical facility. Don't you think that? I'm not so anyway, June asks Beth. Can she ask the other Marthas, do they can find can they find someone to move children? They know anybody that would like to move children. I was like, you know, listen. I could have sworn they told her before, time and time again, the network don't move people. In June, the children are people. They little people, but they still people. That's to me would seem proof harder to move than an adult. Um, but Beth doesn't let us know if she's gonna help her or not. She's just like, girl, you're gonna try to get yourself killed. However, uh, because things seem to always fall in place for June. Of course, Beth is going to help her out. You know that. Um, June seems to be demonstrating um, a kind of wired behavior. She's always glassy eyes. She's seemingly moving in a manner that seems like it's um, with reckless abandon, you know. And 
I know at the same time, she's giving us the air that I got this shit in the bag. Like, I know what I'm doing. Like, cake cetera, et cetera. You remember that from last episode? So, she runs into Commander Lois, you know. Um, he's leaving Illinois' room. She in there having an episode. She cursing him to hell out because her throwing things. And um, Beth had already said she done started throwing things at us. That's why I say it sounds like schizophrenia to me. So, anyway, June, you know, whispers to him, you know, you can get her out. You can get out with her. I can't understand her whispery ass tone. Like, <laughs> Of course he can leave with her is what she tell him. No, she can't go on like this. He first told her to keep his damn wife's name out of her mouth. That's the first thing he said. But then he seemed to be you know, taking, um, taking what June is saying. And I'm like, I don't like this. <laughs> this seems so against the Commander Lawrence that they built for us, the character they built for us. He was a confident, commanding person. And now this little gnat can break him. This little gnat can get in his ear. With that little whispery ass tone of voice when she talked to people, she trying to manipulate you. She always get quiet like this when she talk. When I want to manipulate your ass and make you do what I want you to do, it's something sexy and alluring in my way, in my voice, and calming that makes you quell your anger and get into my and I allow me to get into your head. It annoys me. Oh my god, she seems though that she was satisfied that she instilled some type of fear to him, and it's like. Mm. Oh, uh, anyway, June, she heads into Lowe's and Fishes. You know that she didn't have no walking part, and she did coming in with a Martha. And uh, all the other maids are looking at her like she cursed or something. Like another uh, walking part of hers is dead, is what she said. Um, yeah, she lives on, which is still like baffles the fuck out of me. And she only <laughs> has a really bad and active limp to show for it. It bothered me something terrible with her and that damn limp, y'all. It was so pronounced at some points. I understand when she was walking fast, it was going to be more pronounced. But some points it was pronounced. At some point, it didn't exist at all. Like when she was coming into the store, it was very pronounced. When she went to the stadium, it was gone. There was no limp at all. She was coming out that basement later on in the episode. She didn't have a limp at all. She round the corner. The limp came back. The limp came and went as she was walking into the room. I was like, girl, girl, like what's going on? I'm like, Elizabeth, do better with that limp. Do better with that limp, girl. They could at least get her a corrective shoe. You know, a corrective shoe. Some of them have like a, a different heel size height and something like that. And have a corrective shoe to throw her, limp, her balance off so she could look like she was really limp, like it was more natural. Anyway, she goes into the coolers where they go meet at. And I'm going to tell her, look, her, uh, I ain't going to do nothing else for you. They watching us like hawks right now. And you are so conspicuous. We've been saying that. All of us have been saying that. June does not move in silence. She's not a G. She don't move in silence like lasagna. What she does is she goes against the grain. So obviously, you can clearly see she's back here having conversations. Just her body language, which they're not supposed to be doing. Yet she is untouchable. They like gives no fucks about her for real. And um, I was surprised that the other handmaids though were shunning her. I was really surprised by that. Y'all were just on her team just the other day, bullshit, bullying the hell out of a Matthew, her old shuck and jive ass, ass, bullying her to death. Now y'all acting like Joan is the plague. I mean, she's always been the plague, but y'all was so quick to be on her team, right? Well, the alarms go off in the building. Time for inspection. Again, apparently, Alma say it's becoming a regular thing, these inspections. Surprising, because we ain't never seen it ourselves before it happened. Baby, it was so many damn handmaids. I was like, where did they all come from? Come on in the room. I was like, come on in, come up. Pause. Somebody asked before what happened to the five Chicago women that June selected to become Martha's. That's a good damn question, because they were supposedly picked based off of their skill set. But June has not tried to use them or connect with them or anything. Nothing to her benefit. Um, they haven't even showed them women again. We don't even know who the fuck these five women were. Um, then it, somebody else also asked, where was Nick? I don't know, and I don't care at this point for real. But he's supposed to be leading the war in Chicago. Um, but I had another question. like, Why didn't the McKenzie's have a handmaid of their own? The whole purpose here in Gilead is to populate Gilead with as many children as possible. Um, later, we see Fred and Commander Stabler discussing Commander Lawrence's inability to procreate with any of his handmaids. Why was the Mackenzies excluded from having a handmaid? Why did they 
You know, that's all they had was hand a banana. They didn't have no handmaid in there trying to bust it down. How are they special? And then Serena and Fred right now don't even have another handmaid. I find that interesting. The Putnams, they don't have another handmaid. But they get like a two-year break or something after they get one baby. Commander Stanley don't seem to. He had a whole motherfucking basketball team over his career. Okay, well, anyway. Back to what we was talking about. The inspection. Everybody is made to file in. They line up, hands down, hands in front of you. Everybody but you. Conspicuous. I like that Alma used that word. Everybody it seems to be in synchronization, but June is so obviously looking around, trying to see what she could see. Always, like, they got a special guest. Who might that be? Commander Fred Waterford. Hey, welcome, boy. He's sure to make sure that his hole is in line. That's pretty much what he's doing. He, he pretty much coming in and saying, don't act no fool. Don't make me look bad. That's the feel of the earth right now. But June is still looking around curious as a cat. Fred approaches her. Hey, girl, how you doing? How you doing? You miss me? Mm -hmm. Hate to have you out in the cold like this, but you kind of used to this, right? Because you're a Boston girl. But it's a little warm in D.C. I can get you transferred there if you want to. <laughs> she like uh, your wife or your fucking pervert. <laughs> Serena Joy walks in with who? Commander Stabler. And he wants to see the tea on these unruly ass hammer maids that he heard so much about. So, you know, these disobedient ass women. So Stabler walks through, sees Janine Eyepatch. What the fuck is this? This ain't a regulation, you know what I'm saying? I literally like look at her. She was disfigured due to criminal actions, but you know, we allow her a little pass and we got her that, you know, that one time. And he like, really? You think that's smart, really? Encouraging favor to somebody who like known to act out, you know, no all these women who known for violent rebellion, y'all encouraging favor among them. I literally was like, Well, yes, for now, you know. Um, so then he goes on, What about the veils? They coming. They get them my veils, okay. What about the rings? Oh, well, we be rolling that out soon too. Oh, really? That was interesting to hear. I don't know if y'all heard that conversation. Because when they started talking about that, I was like, they finna seal these women's lips together. I literally said that the veils would be voluntary. I don't know about the rings or how they're going to decide who get the rings. But the veils going to be voluntary. And then the conversation fades to black as Serena Joy has a personal conversation with June too. Nobody finds this strange that June keeps having... This type of attention. Fred comes in, give her personal attention. Serena comes in, give her personal attention. But no other commander is ever shown to be this personal with any handmaid. I think Putnam was our last commander that was like personal with handmaid because you no know, Janine fell in love with him. They, you know, she, we supposed to run away and be together, right? But other than that, you don't see no other commanders walking around giving they the they handmade special little private conversations and and then June really could just be all flippy lippy at the mouth and say what the fuck she want to say to him. Nobody else does this and nobody else finds this odd or strange that she's allowed to do it. Oh, mm. well anyway, Commander Stabler. <sighs> he come around and ask June, how was Commander Lawrence doing? This is my old golfing buddy. We used to go golf right after church every Sunday. You know, and when June said that he was treating her with respect, you could have picked him up off the floor. Respect. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Respect. Where the fuck we do that at? You know what I'm saying? Fred, however, seemed jealous because June seemed to be happy where she was at. And I don't know what kind of a JJ that June got going on, but Fred is just one of them controlling type dudes. Can't nobody else have his little prize puppy. I don't care how many times I kicked you. You know what I'm saying? You still supposed to be loyal to me and to me only. Fred is a sick, twisted ass dude, right? Well, it looks like it's about to be some drastic changes coming to Boston. And Fred wants to start with Commander Lawrence. Stabler is not too happy with Fred picking on his golf buddy, but you better be damn sure before you go accusing a man of his stature that he doing something wrong. And Fred said, well, come on now. You know, he done had four handmaids and has not been able to have children with any of them. Four 
oh, you should have seen his house. You know what I'm saying? We just made him clear his house out and get it up to Gilly ass standards. You know, but after all that he's contributed to the process, he's starting to act like um, he's not part of the program anymore. Like he's like he's above us now. And I find that concerning. So Serena kept piping in the conversation. And every time she opened her damn mouth, Stabler looked like, ugh. You sure got a lot to damn say. You know, don't she know her damn place? That's the look he kept throwing her. Serena, Serena surprisingly don't think they should focus on Lawrence. Like she's trying to protect June or something. Um, because when the conversation turned to of Joseph, his current handmaid, you know, Serena threw some looks on where Rita. And I was like, really, Serena? Really? Okay. Um, but they like, if he's not abiding by, because Serena was like, with the methods that they want to do, she think, and you think that's a bit extreme. If he's not abiding by the Gilead rules, then he should be dealt with. That's the same thing that I've been saying about June. If she ain't been abiding by the rules, then she should be dealt with. But that ain't what y'all been doing. Now, like I said, Rita was in the background ear hustling when Stable agreed that Lawrence may be an issue. So she tiptoed off. I'm thinking that she's going to go warn her ass. Now, um, being that Lawrence has turned a blind eye on the network habit, I'm sure Rita will want him to know they got their eyes on you. We are back at the house. June gets busted by Eleanor going through Lawrence's files. She admits she's looking for the children of the handmaids. Eleanor, who can't stay in Gilead, proves to be a willing accessory to help her find these damn files. See, June, there was no need to manipulate her. None at all. No manipulation required. Eleanor takes her down, shows her all the files, and apparently Lawrence is supposed to like review them and then send them over. So, so he's sending them all over to him. So it's kind of unbelievable when he said he don't know where Hannah Banana at. I just refuse to believe that. Anywho, whose file does June go to first? Of course, her own. And this is the first time they try to give us a timestamp on how long they've been there. June said it's been five years since the children were snatched, which does not add up. When she got to the Waterfords, that was her third house. And they give you two years at each house. So she had already been there four years when she got to the Waterfords. June, Janine got pregnant after June got there and then had a baby. Okay. And then June got pregnant and had a baby. We just going to do the, the time of gestation. We're going to say 18 months, right? For them together. So it's been almost two years plus since June arrived at the Waterfoots. Because little Jelly Bean is way over six months old now. And then you just sat up in here with a Matthew for a month and a half now. Come on now. This timeline ain't adding up. But we're going to let y'all have it because y'all try to give us a time step on it. But anyway, Beth comes and gets June. Oh, we also learned that uh, Jadine had a son before she got to her son. Caleb got snatched and he died in a car accident. We learned that too. That's going to come into play later on. But Beth comes and gets June because she's needed in the sitting room. She has her red velvet pillow. And of course, Serena, not Serena, that's the girl named June. They same damn person. June gets nervous. But in comes Serena Joy with Eleanor. You know, we pray that nothing will impede God's will tonight. Stabler comes on in with Fred, Lydia. And Lawrence is like, what the fuck is going on here? You know, well, Commander Lawrence, you and June, y'all gonna have to engage finally. You know what I'm saying? Under his eye. And I'm like, why the hell is Serena Joy again? <laughs> what? Because according to our Lydia, the whole entire family and household should be privy to what's going on. Fred and Serena Joy ain't part of the household. Now the commanders want to come and check up. Okay, but why is Serena Joy there? It made no sense. Anyway. June says they used to do this back in the beginning, but they said it was going to be unnecessary. So they weren't going to do it no more. Well, seasons change. People change. In this case, they changed it back to their old ways of doing things just for you, Commander Lawrence, because you a special case because you got June in your household. Well, for Commander Lawrence, um, he like, so what you going to do? You going to sit on the bed with us too? You going to get it up for me, insert it? No, that would be a little bit more fun. Stable, you know, laughing all. <laughs> all right, dog, let's get this party started. Stop playing. You know what I'm saying? Stop playing. Anywho, he could sense Lawrence's hesitation. He like, you got jokes, right? Okay, so Lawrence didn't even know where the little Bible was to read <laughs> from. <laughs> and I'm before we even get to the point, I'm so glad they did not show this scene. Like, blessed be the fruit of my eyes that we did not get to see this scene in my mental stability. I just went to therapy this morning. 
I didn't need to be triggered by that skin. So no one's like, look, we're going to sit here. We're going to meditate for a few minutes, um, play some spades, slap some bones. But oh no, that can't happen. Because they're going to check her cervix afterwards. The docs will be literally split, as Aunt Lydia said. So, Eleanor is freaking out because you swore this shit would never happen. You said that it was going to never happen. She's triggered. She's about to flip out and bring all the boys to the yard. And Lawrence is like, look, we don't have to do anything. June says, yes, you do. No, you don't, Joan. I'm quite sure there is some object in that room that you can screw yourself with. It <laughs> and, and make it seem as if he penetrated you. But June, like, no, nah, we got to do it. And I think it's twofold. I think June wanted him to actually do it, to try to break him. There's no other way. You help build this world. Now you got to reap the consequences of the world that you build. That's basically what June trying to say. June, I think, didn't want it to go down any other way because they could have came up another way. They could have came up with another way. He could have. Fist or any damn thing. He didn't have to stick his peewee in her. But anyway, she didn't have that same favor for uh, Serena Joy. Serena Joy was a victim, even though she helped create this motherfucking place too. <sighs> oh, okay. But Eleanor was like, you know, don't worry. It's just going to be us. We're going to go down for it. We all, you know, you'll be all right. No, the whole house is going down because June should have reported him for not doing his duties. The Marthas, everybody going to be involved. Everybody going to be hanging from the wall. Eleanor was like, oh, no, we all going down. We all going down, right? She freaked out. She freaked out. But you already know the untouchable June ain't going to happen. Nothing going to happen to her. They're going to find some way to write her punishment out of the script. Wasn't going to happen to June. June wasn't weary. So Lawrence pulled a curtain that Eleanor would sit behind so she didn't have to watch. And I just knew she was going to jump out the window. That's how I would have wrote it. Anyway, if she do, long as I'm going to ham on Gilead. That's how I was feeling about it. But she didn't jump. He did his deed. And afterwards, you know, Fred was like, hey, June, you good? You know, I was worried about you. June said, yeah. Because on the plus side, it wasn't you. Face crack. Face crack, Fred. That's what it was. But Serena caught that little concern. Mm, really? You still wondering? How's she doing? Serena not stupid, stupid. She's stupid, but not stupid, stupid. Anyway, let me tell you how resourceful Commander Lawrence is, though. He got June there Plan B. It was actually a pack of birth control, but if you take so many pills at one time, it kind of acts the same way as Plan B, and it, it extracts, expels the egg from the womb. You ain't having no babies up in this joint, not by me. Not today, not tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? That's how Commander Lawrence is feeling. And like I said, I thought Rita was going to somehow warn them that they was coming, but that didn't happen either. But he tells June, I'm going to get you your damn truck and you need to get my fucking wife out safely. See, Eleanor said earlier that Commander Lawrence was a war criminal, so he can't cross the border. He can't do nothing. They're going to kill him on sight. June tells him, no, you can get out too. All you need to do is bring him something valuable. The kids. And I would think just him alone would have been valuable because that's all they needed was like intel. The same thing that Nick was supposed to provide them. But again, um, and again, me and Moon Lily, when we was discussing this last week, um, to me, June has not done anything <laughs> in this episode either. True, she did look through the files, but she was handed those files by Eleanor. Um, and then Eleanor only gave it to her because she hated Gillian so much. And then getting Commander Lawrence on her side again, that was an ill thought out stroke of fate played out by Fred. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, June, you really didn't work. If Fred hadn't set this whole little be a witness thing up, Commander Law still wouldn't be on your side. And I think what me and Moon Lily was talking about, she was saying um, the different things that June has been involved in and she had planned. And I was like, she didn't plan nothing. She didn't plan nothing. I kept saying that it wasn't a plan. She made a decision. I'm going to try to explain it a little further, just real quick before my time run out. I have a few minutes. Damn, I only had a few minutes. Hold on. I can't have the camera cut off on y'all. So, when me and Moon Lily was talking about, like I said, we was uh, debating whether or not things that June have done has been a plan, has been thought through. And I was like, a plan has steps, whatever. Okay, so, let's take me, for example. I get up in the morning. I, I'm going to work. I say, I'm going to work, right? And I get in my car and I go to work. That was a decision I made. But if I get in my car and say, you know what, this week I'm going to go left down this street and make a right down that street because it'd be too much traffic. I want to miss the school zone, so I'm going to make sure I cut through this neighborhood. I might take the highway today. No, I ain't going to take the highway. That's a plan. June ain't did no planning. She just made some decisions. She got up in the morning and said, I'm going to work. That's what June has been doing. So, so you know, I love, I love when Moon Lily and I talk. 
I swear I do. Every time she comes on to the comment section, she has her own thought, her own point of view that she sticks to regardless of it's disagreeing with me. I love that. I really do. And I think that's probably what made me realize how many people are going to other channels and taking what that reviewer said and then coming back here and posting in the comment section as an argument. That That's just strange to me. It's like plagiarism with words. <laughs> Anyway, um, back at the store, back at Lowe's and Vicious. Uh, June, she comes to the when she got the plan. She's like, girl, go away. You did a fucking nightmare right now. Go away. Um, but she played to her senses. She played to her senses. I know where your son is at. I know his name is Caleb. I mean, not Caleb. I forgot what her son's name was. But she know her son's name. And I know he got blonde hair. And what would you do to get him out of here if you could get him free, right? So Alma said, okay, fine. I'm listening. I'm listening. So June said she got a truck. You can hold about 10 people. She's seen it. Um, but she ain't going to leave without Hannah. So now Janine is listening, too. Janine say, oh, I can help. Y'all, y'all just don't know the excited scream I let out when Janine said it. I can help. I rose to my feet. I rose to my feet like, yes, Janine. Yes, girl. I knew you weren't too far gone. We know that Janine has to have a strong faith, but the difference between her and of Matthew, Janine has never thought that Gilead was the right way. She never had belief in this place. She just had a belief in God. Of Matthew had a belief in Gilead, or at least that's what she was trying to make us believe and try to get other people to act like, you know, that's the difference between her and, and uh, Matthew to me. I was so happy when Janine said that. They looked at her like, Janine, Janine said, I'm brave. I can do some shit. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yes. Look at you, Janine, girl. Shoot. Don't underestimate my girl. Don't underestimate her. Well, anyway, Alma thinks they should start with an older child. Because somebody like Sasha's kid. I don't know who Sasha is. <laughs> but uh, she said, you know, because that child could be quiet. That was my concern, too. you trying to move children. And you couldn't, the network couldn't even move people right. But you want to move children? Look, crying-ass babies. They want their mama and want their toys. And, you know what I'm saying? Want some Kool-Aid. Yeah, I want some candy. Really? You want to try to move crying children, babies? So I was concerned about that, right? Like I said, um... So Alma says she's going to start asking around. I don't know what she's asking around about because June already has information where every child is at. Eleanor gave her all the files. So what is Alma asking around? Um, oh, is, did she ask Alma to help her find somebody to help move the children? That might have been what it is. And maybe that's what Alma's going to ask around about. Anyway, um, when Janine asked June about Caleb. Caleb is her son. I got pissed at June all over again. I was like, why lie to that girl? And keep playing with her fucking emotions like she's a fucking invalid ass child herself. Um, you keep taking her right away to know what's really going on with her child. That's fucked up, I think. She made up this story about her child is safe and sound in California. The family is a beautiful, loving family. And I was like, so you going to allow this girl to help you do whatever it is you need to do to make sure you can get Hannah free without knowing the truth about her own child, just on the back end of a fucking lie. I was really pissed about that shit. Ah. Oh. Telling her her son had died in a car accident will probably fuel Janine. We know Janine can be a loose end, but that may want to make her fight a little harder to get all the other children free. That's what I was saying. You know what I'm saying? But instead, she want to give her this false sense of hope that her son is still out there living on the beach. Now, y'all might go through all this rigmarole and help all these kids get free. And then Janine be like, well, let's go get Caleb. We could do this. And find out Caleb been dead. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. Serena Joy come in and in and tell Fred, look her, you got your priorities fucked up. You need to get them straight. You need to get back online with me. You've been doing stuff to prioritize yourself. Doing a lot of stuff for Gilead, but not for us and this family. It's been months. Months, I tell you. And we not one step closer to bringing Nicole home. So we know that he did what you know, Stabler wanted him to do. Um, so me and you, we need to get on the same page. Like she said, I know somebody in Canada. He's a fucking American and he can help us. Now, Trujillo 
was going to help you get out of Gilead. But now it seems like Serena Joy wants to help, use him to help him bring Nicole back. It still don't seem like she's trying to escape to Gilead to get free herself. She wants to bring the child back there. And she wants to use Tree Yellow uh, to help do it. I was a bit confused. I'm like, how did you come to that conclusion that he'd be willing to help you do that? Well, she brings Fred in this two-way that Trilo gave to her. I don't remember when the two-way happened. I was surprised she had it. Um, she said, it's all you got to do is offer him your cooperation. Fred looked like he was between a rock and a hard place because he really don't give a damn about bringing the cold back for real. But anyway, back at the crib, Beth got muffins. Earlier in the episode when they found out that um, the Marthas couldn't bring the medicine no more, they delivered her scones. Scones mean, that, no, we can't do nothing else for you. But now they bring muffins and muffins mean yes. And the kitchen is full of them. The table counter, the island, the counters, full of muffins. Um, I was just wondering, all these people who are willing to help get these children out, but nobody's ever tried. All these people right now, they're willing to help do it. They're willing to help June do it. Who really don't have a plan herself. Commander Lois just gave her a truck. But um, y'all gonna willing to snatch these kids and move them. Ain't nobody in all these five, because I know it's been eight, all these five years though. <laughs> it's been eight years. But um, ain't nobody decided to try to get any of these kids out before. I'm glad that y'all coming to this conclusion, but really? Ain't nobody? Okay. In the end, we get that long, annoying stir of Jones into the camera again. Oh, my God. Lord, please stop that. Please. Like, her face is fucking annoying. I don't even want to go see that movie, The Kitchen, because Elizabeth Moss is in it. Well, one, I don't like um, one of the comedians that's in it, too. I can't even think of her real name right now. And Elizabeth Moss is in it, and her face, she's doing that annoying stir in the movie, too. I seen it in the trail, and I was like, I don't want to see that, just because of that. But anyway, we end the episode with Gloria by Vivaldi playing. Gloria in excelsis. And what is it? In excelsis day. In excelsis day. Oh. That's it. We used to sing it in high school. I know many high school choir. We was the bomb. We used to get kind of awards and certificates and other stuff. We went to D.C. to go sing for the president. Yo, our choir was the bomb. I used to be a second soprano. Oh, I'm not no more. I'm not no more. I done had four bouts of strep throat and I probably maybe a second alto. I might be a first alto on a good day, but I think I'm hanging around in that second alto range because I sound like I've been chewing on glass. That's what it sounds like to me. But Anyway, back in the day when this was written, Gloria in excelsis, in excelsis day, Gloria, Gloria. We used to do that little round off. In excelsis day. I like opera. Anyway, um, back when this song was originally written, um, it was made to be sung by all female choir. So I think it holds significance in the fact that um all the women on this show are finally doing it for themselves. Like Aretha would say, sisters are doing it for themselves. Hey, getting on their own two feet. I, I don't know all the words. I don't know the words. Anyway, with the help of Joseph Lawrence, the sisters are doing it for themselves. I can't see Fred getting no boy. I just can't see it. He like his new power. It's, you know, he like the power he has wielded. I don't see Fred getting on board with Serena. Not at all. I think he had played the game long enough to make him make her think he is, but no. Mm -mm. He like his new position. I wonder if his new position is somewhere in front of Detective Stabler, if you know what I mean. That is the end of this episode, y'all. I thank y'all for being here. I appreciate your time and your patience. I've been going through an episode myself. That's pretty much what it is. And I just didn't have the desire to record videos the past couple of days. I had some things early in the week that was like technical, but then by Wednesday, I was having an episode. That's why I went to therapy this morning. I already did. Um, but yeah, short plug on my book again. Regrets will be out soon and very soon. We are going to have a book soon and very soon. Y'all see my cover? I designed my cover. It's a little bullet, some wedding rings, and some glass of liquor. You know what I'm saying? So that kind of give you an idea. 
me looking out for that link. Thank y'all for being here. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please feel free to do so. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Peace.